This time I have the latest release, or at least the latest release that I could get my hands on from uh, Macaloni's Caledonian. And they are a distillery that are just about, uh, you know, 10 minutes drive from where I live. I think they're the closest distillery to where I live. And Macaloni's has been getting a lot of, uh, shall we say, litigation from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Association. Or, anyway, those, those guys in Scotland who were in charge of protecting their brands of uh, Scotch whiskey. Now, um, I think it's ridiculous that there should be litigation over somebody's name. I mean, the guy's name, the distiller, his name is Macaloni, and it's a Caledonian style. It's a Scottish style whiskey. So Macaloni's Caledonian, what's wrong with that? He names it, this whiskey, Invermally. Invermally is a place in Scotland where I guess his family lived at one point. And um, Invermally was not used on the label of any other whiskey. Anyway, it's just ridiculous and farcical that this whole thing, this whole international litigation is going on. And uh, so, if anything, it's uh, publicity for Macaloni's. Um, but who needs the hassle? They just want to make whiskey. They just want to make good whiskey. That's all they want to do. So I have here, this was the last one that I got my hands on. And this was back in November. Now we're into February. Um, and this was bottled uh, in October of uh, 2021. It's 57.9% alcohol by volume. So I'm saying, thinking cask strength. PPM scaled. Okay, there's no peat. Cask number 59. Bottle number 36 out of 200 and... 94. Bottle number 36 out of 291. So there's, there haven't been many of these around. And if there has been a more recent release from Macaloni's Caledonian, I don't know about it. Because I'm on their mailing list. And they would have mailed me if there's a new release. Now this... Uh, I received the email from them that this was available and then I phoned the or should I say I went to the tasting room and boutique that they have on the at the distillery and um, they didn't have any there it was still it was in the warehouse but they didn't have it in the boutique so in, in order to get it I had to buy it online and they had to ship it to me, which is for a 10 minute drive shipping, but you know, it's a matter of being able to get it. So I got it from their shipping and uh, including the price of the whiskey and the shipping and the taxes and everything else, it was about $170. And this is, it's cast strength, but it's, it's a um, non-age statement. And it's, uh, yeah, Richard, what does it say here? Invermally Island Single Malt Whiskey, Single Cask, Limited Release, Carefully Matured in Premium Richard Red Wine Barrique, Island Distilled and Matured, Natural Color and Non-Chill Filtered, and uh, World Whiskey Awards Category Winner. I think that was for their new make. There's a lot of writing on here, so I, I will probably get to the writing after I have poured some of this. And this may end up being a long video because of all the writing in fine print on that uh, box. Oh, come on. Well, I got you now. Get the foil open. All right. This is the Friday video. I have made videos for Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday already. I had the, the sample Sunday. 
because the sample Sunday was bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. And this is bottled at 57. It only makes sense to leave the strongest for last. Oh, righteous cork, righteous pop. This is a composite cork. And this is a Glencairn glass. All right. And I haven't had anything to eat yet. That may be a bad thing, but for the palate, it's better to not have had anything to eat yet. Although I have had a couple of whiskeys. I have had a, oh, the sample Sunday, which was 46% alcohol by volume and peated. And I also had um, this morning. That was it this morning. Last night, I had a couple of whiskeys. Let me tell you. Last night, I had some Stillhead Canadian whiskey aged in virgin oak. And before that, I did have something else. What did I have? My memory ain't always that good. Oh, of course. The Chivas Regal 21 gun salute. And I sort of tried it next to the 18 year old, which I prefer the 18 year old. It has a lot, it has more going for it. But they're both 40% alcohol by volume whiskeys and that is their limitation. They are starter whiskeys, even though they are 18 and 21 years old. So now here we are to the latest edition of Invermally that I have. Okay. It's pretty dark. And we have a lot of droplets sticking to the side of the glass. Yeah, sheeting action. Look down it goes. And droplets sticking to the side, but they're not really... Okay, there are some trails of droplets. Some trails. But they're sticking to the side of the glass. On the nose. I get that red wine. Barrique. And rechard. So the barrique is a French oak. It was, it contained wine, red wine, I believe. Did it say red wine? Yeah, red wine. With red wine and rechard. I'm still getting some of that red wine, but it's not too much red wine. It's a just just the right amount. I may end up having to add some water to this in order to get the most out of it later on. But right now I'm getting some of that barrel char and some of that red wine. The char and the red wine almost completely cover up the distillery characteristics. This has to be at least three years old in order to be called a whiskey. So it's at least three years old. Maybe four. I don't know exactly. There's no age statement on In Invermally. It's all pretty young. I'm getting more of the red wine and more of the char. Those, like I said, cover up the, the distiller, distillery characteristics. Which is known for being the 
new make is known for being quite sweet. I might be able to get more out of the nose if I added some water. But it's kind of a tradition with me that I always taste it neat first. Then I may add some water. On the nose, like I said, I'm getting some of the red wine, some of the char, a little bit of the sweet fruitiness um, typical of Macaroni's. So there is a bit of spirit driving it. Let's taste this. Hmm. This may be the best macaroni's in Vermali yet. I get the char, I get the red wine. It's rich. Rich and flavorful. And I'm also getting some of that uh, new make characteristic, the coming in underneath all that red wine and barrel char. Hmm. Go for a second sip. It smells better and better as I go along. More of the red wine, more of the char, lots and lots of it. It's very deep. But when you dig deep enough, there is that spirit driven thing going on. And from what I understand, this was matured entirely in the Richard red wine barrique. So this is not a finish. This is this is uh, this is the real deal. This is dark. Dark fruits, grapes, raisins, and ripe, not dried. More plums, plums and raisins. Um, grapes, wine. Yeah, none of that. Oh, maybe some figs and dates as well but not so much the dried fruit as much as the fresh ripe fruit. And then the recharring makes for a little bit of a burnt effect. It's a nice balance between the fruit and the char. Mm, nice balance. Giving me a bit of a hug there. I'll have to add some water. And it looks like I forgot to bring a spoon. So I'm going to use my finger. There's a drop, another drop, another drop, another drop, another drop, another drop. Maybe one more drop. Okay. Let's try it now with some drops of water. Oh, what a difference. It seemed kind of closed in without the water. Now I'm getting a lot more of the rich fruitiness 
Oh yes. I'm also getting a lot more of the macaroni spirit. So more of the maturation and more of what came out of the still. And more of the rechar. No, this is a win-win situation. This has got gotten more complex with the water, at least on the nose. I think I'm going to enjoy this one more than I've enjoyed any Macaloni's Caledonian in Vermali to date. Oh, yeah. The fruits are there, the plums, the grapes, the ripe fruits, not dried, plums. Mm. Mm. A lot going on there. Let's taste it. Oh, much better. The red wine really shines now. The red wine, the fruits from the red wine, a little bit of that sweetness from the spirit itself. Nicely balanced. Strong, yes. And then on the finish, I'm getting the, the, the char, the charred wood charred oak. Nice that they use the French wood barriques. I'm getting some caramel and vanilla notes coming in there too. My phone made a noise. I wonder what that's all about. Meanwhile, I'm enjoying nosing this while my mouth is coated in it. Quite the experience. Mm. Oh, beautiful, harmonious, ripe, dark fruits. Richard Oak. And the dry finish, the dry finish of complex, dry finish of charred oak and ripe fruits. Mm. The mouth is coated all over by this thickness. Did we say it was viscous? Well, there are a lot of drops sticking to the glass. Trails of drops. And some of the drops are quite fat. Mm. Yeah. This is a very rewarding little experience. I'm glad I went for this. It's potent, it's strong, but the flavor is there. Just got to add some water to make it more palatable. It could still use some water, but I don't have a spoon. So, with that in mind, cheers. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>